Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. We do a lot of tutorials on video editing. Things like specific effects, techniques, or general tips to help your project look better. We focus a lot on the things that you should do, but today we're going to be focusing on things that you should stay away from. We're going to be focusing on three beginner mistakes that you should avoid at all costs. If you fall into any of these, your project runs the risk of looking completely amateur. So let's jump right into it with number one, avoid harsh cuts. Nothing takes you out of the groove of a video faster than a harsh cut. Ugh, what happened there? And how do you avoid it? Well, this can take on a couple different forms, but this mainly happens when your audio and your video cut to a different section or a different take in a way that draws attention to the cut itself. It reminds you that you're watching a video, and you don't want that. Part of the problem is that the video cut and the audio cut are happening at the same time. So all of the focus goes on this one place where the change is happening. It's sort of like doing a magic trick, but you told the audience to focus on the place where you are making the trick happen. Not the best, but the solution is actually pretty simple. One quick fix is to simply offset where the video and audio cuts are happening. You can do this by simply using the rolling edit tool with the shortcut key N. Click and drag either the video cut or the audio cut in either direction to make the two cuts happen in different locations. Depending on the direction you choose, you're probably gonna create either an L cut or a J cut. We actually did an entire video on L and J cuts. If you wanna go more in depth into this topic, then you can check out the video link in the description below. Number two, bad slow-mo. Have you ever seen a fun slow motion shot that makes you think, cool, I wanna do that. But then you try to make something yourself and it looks sort of like this. This, my friends, is bad slow-mo. It's choppy and it doesn't really look good. It's really easy to spot and can totally ruin the vibe of your video, but thankfully it's pretty easy to fix. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is that your frame rate is probably too low to actually turn it into slow motion. Unless you've shot with a camera that has specific slow motion functionality, probably what you're doing is taking a clip running at normal speed and then dropping the speed manually to make it slower. To understand this more, we're gonna be using two terms captured frame rate and resulting frame rate. Captured frame rate is the number of frames per second that your footage is captured at through your camera. There's a lot of different standards like 23.976 frames per second, 24, 25, 30, 50, 60, 96, 120 frames per second, etc. Resulting frame rate is actually the functional number of resulting frames that you see happening per second when you manually drop your speed down. There's no actual display that shows this to you usually, so to figure it out, you're gonna have to do some very simple math. If you have a shot that, for example, was captured at 120 frames per second, and you drop the speed by 50%, or half, then you should have a resulting frame rate of 60 frames per second. But if you drop a shot that's taken at 24 frames per second by half, then you get a resulting frame rate of 12 frames per second. Do you wanna know what 12 frames per second looks like? Well, it looks like this. It's choppy, and you can start to see where we went wrong. As a general rule of thumb, you don't want your functional frame rate to drop below your sequence timeline frame rate. If you just want a general hard and fast rule to follow, don't let your functional frame rate drop below 24 frames per second. This is the lowest that you can have your footage play at with it still looking quote unquote normal. So what's the solution? Well, it's really just to work with what you have. I know that all of us wanna be able to capture something breaking or exploding in super crazy slow motion like some other people, but not all of us have access to a $100,000 camera that can shoot at like a million frames per second. Instead, create ideas that can work within the functionality of the equipment you do have. Maybe your camera only shoots at 60 frames per second. That's still enough to drop your speed down to 40%. And the results aren't crazy super slow motion, but they could still give you a really nice effect. But the bottom line is that if this is the only slow motion that you can achieve, it's probably best to leave it out of your video entirely. And number three, pacing. Our previous two tips were pretty easy to fix, but this next one is a little bit more complicated. And the reason isn't because there's some sort of meticulous technique you have to master, it's more just because it's kind of subjective. Pacing refers to the rate of movement, and in this case, it's the rate of movement of elements like story and visuals in your video but it's all based on feeling. There's times when you see a shot and it lasts forever. It's like, cut already, we get it. It's a beach, there's water. Why, why are you still showing this? It's still going, just cut. And on the other side, you can have shots that are way too short. So quick that you lose the ability to register all of the information of that shot. 
Put either of these in scenarios throughout the duration of your film, and you're left with either a bored or confused audience, and sometimes both. But here's the thing, holding a shot for really, really long isn't bad in and of itself, and neither is a shot that's really, really short. Mad Max Fury Road won six Oscars, and its average shot length was only 2.1 seconds per shot. That's crazy fast. But Russian Ark by Alexander Sukharov was a revolutionary film, and it lasted for 99 minutes, and it consisted of one single shot. Not like Birdman where they made it look like one shot, but actually just one shot. So what's better? Do you hold a shot for longer? Do you cut it shorter? Do you do neither? And how do you even know? Well, the truth is that there's nothing that's automatically going to be better for your film. The truth is, is that each film has its own tone and can be presented in an infinite number of different ways. A shot can last for a long time if the director wants you to be at peace, for example. Whereas a fight scene in the same film can have really quick cuts to help you feel anticipation and concern just minutes later. The answer to fixing bad pacing is unfortunately a bit of a non-answer. It's your own personal taste and your own personal preference based on what you want your audience to feel. But here's a good place to start. Ask yourself, what do I want my audience to feel? If your answer is, I want them to know I went to the beach. Cool. They'll probably figure that out after a second or two. But if your goal is, I want to have my audience ponder the existence of their own consciousness and the chaos found within, represented by the tranquil waters crashing over the desolate shores in a swirl of foam and surf, mesmerized by the beauty of something that both gives life and takes it through force and destruction. You're going to be there for a while. When all is said and done, it's a pretty good idea to show somebody else your video. Ask them what they think, and you'll probably get some answers. Things like, that shot on the beach went on way too long, and I got bored. Or maybe they'll say, that shot on the beach spoke to me in a way I didn't expect. Take their consideration with a grain of salt, and then make an executive decision. The more videos you make, and the more time you go through this process, the more you'll find you can feel where shots should go, and how long they should last for. But more importantly, you'll also start to see your own personal style develop. So go for it and see where your work takes you. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, we've got tons of other tutorials over at motionarray.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.